you an article I found kind of fun. This is by the BBC. Link in the description. The scientists learning to speak whale in a world first. Scientists had a conversation with a whale. Now researchers are trying to find out what they are saying. A growling throb noise emanates from the research vessel's underwater speaker. A humpback breaks away from its group and approaches. The mammal circles the boat. It surfaces and then dives again, tail slipping noiselessly into the water and echoes the callback. Researchers who conversed with a humpback whale say their encounter could be the first step towards communication with non-human intelligence. It was in 2021, off the coast of southeast Alaska, that the team of six scientists played a recording of a humpback greeting call using an underwater speaker. They were stunned when one humpback whale they had named Dwayne responded in a conversational manner. It's like experiencing another world. You hear them come up to the surface. Then there's this big breath. You can see it, and they're all together as a group. It's just incredible, says Josie Hubbard, an animal behaviorist currently studying for her PhD at the University of California, Davis. Hubbard was on the research vessel, which was floating, all engines silenced, in Frederick Sound, Alaska, when she encountered humpback whales for the first time. As per regulations, you have to stop a couple of hundred meters away from the whales and turn your engine off says Hubbard. Rarely, she says, the whales may approach. In this instance, 38-year-old Twain did move towards the boat and proceeded to circle the vessel for 20 minutes. Hubbard is part of a search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI, research team, hoping to understand the communicative complexity and intelligence of humpback whales. Up on the top deck, Hubbard was oblivious to the work of the acousticians going on beneath the surface. Below deck, Brenda McCowan was broadcasting a recorded humpback contact call, a whop or throp, through an underwater speaker. When Twain finally moved away, Hubbard ran downstairs to find a hubbub of excitement. Twain had spoken back, engaging in a conversation that lasted a full 20 minutes. Long, rhythmic, and constantly evolving, whales haunting songs can flow entire ocean basins. They chatter with whistles and pulses, or use echolocation to paint pictures of their underwater world. Whales have enchanted humans for centuries. In fact, whales display a long list of behaviors similar to humans. They cooperate with one another as well as other species. They teach each other useful skills, look after each other's young, and play. However, unlike human, the dominant sense in whales is not sight, but hearing. Sink 200 meters, 660 feet below the ocean surface and you'll travel beyond the reach of light. Sound, on the other hand, can move 
farther and faster in water than it does in the air. Baleen whales, including humpbacks, right whales, and blue whales, have evolved a unique larynx that allows them to produce super low frequency sounds, which can travel huge distances. Blue whales, for instance, emit frequencies as low as 12.5 hertz classed as infrasound and below the threshold of human hearing. Toothed whales, meanwhile, which include sperm whales, dolphins, porpoises, and orcas, are among the loudest animals on earth and use ultra fast clicks for echo see their world, as well as soft burst pulses and whistles to communicate. Cetaceans have evolved over 50 million years to produce and hear a variety of complex sounds. They rely on noise to communicate with each other, to navigate, find mates and food, defend their territories and resources, and avoid predators. Their young babble, much like human infants. Some are believed to have names, and groups from different parts of the ocean have regional dialects. Whales have been heard mimicking the dialects of foreign groups some are even thought to have given human language a shot. The songs of the humpback whale are thought to be among the most complex in the animal kingdom. The first recording of humpback whale song was made in 1952 by U.S. Navy engineer Frank Watlington. Almost 20 years later, marine biologist Robert Payne noticed these calls were organized in repeating patterns. This transformed our understanding of whale vocalizations and sparked an interest that would lead to decades of research. Fast forward to today and the SETI research team hopes deciphering whale communication could help us to understand aliens, should we encounter any. The group hypotheses that whale sounds contain complex, intelligent messages akin to languages used by humans Terrestrials. However, says McCowan, our understanding of whale communication is still very much in its infancy. On that particular day, off the coast of Alaska, McCowan had already broadcast a host of different sounds with no response. But this one call was recorded the day before, she says, and it was from this population of whales. After playing the contact call three times, we got this huge response. Then, to keep the animal engaged, I tried matching the latency of her calls to our calls. So, if she waited 10 seconds, I waited 10 seconds. We ended up matching each other. We did this 36 times over a 20 minute period. Throughout the 
exchange, Twain consistently matched the interval variations between each playback call. This is thought to be the first intentional human whale interaction in humpback whale language. And as the recording was of Twain's family group, adds Hubbard, this could indicate some form of recognition, possibly even self-recognition. However, studying whales is not without its challenges. McCowan emphasizes Twain chose to approach the boat and was free to leave whenever she wanted. But therein lies the problem. Whales can usually be found wherever the fish are, adds Hubbard. But we don't know where the fish are, so you have to search to find them in order to study them. And to get a complete picture, researchers need to replicate the data with multiple unique pods. Next, the team plan to vary the calls they broadcast. We're still at a very early stage, says McCowan. A big challenge for us is classifying these signals and determining their context so we can ascertain the meaning. I think AI will help us do that. More than 5,000, 8,000 kilometers away, a group of artificial intelligence and natural language processing experts, cryptographers, linguists, marine biologists, robotic experts, and underwater acousticians are also helping to use AI, this time to decipher sperm whale conversation. Launched in 2020, SETI with a C, Cetacean Translation Initiative, led by marine biologist David Gruber, has been continuously recording a group of whales off the coast of Dominica, an island in the Caribbean, using microphones on buoys, robotic fish, and tags fitted whale's backs. Gruber is somewhat of an anomaly. He is a microbiologist, a scientist who studies the microscopic, who has gone on to work with some of the largest creatures on the planet. He began his career looking at the interactions of bacteria and protozoa in the ocean in relation to carbon cycling and climate change. From this, he moved through coral, jellyfish, and sharks until his interests brought him to whales. It's really about seeing the world from the perspective of animals, he says, or in the case of whales, hearing sperm whales, which have the largest brains of any animal, gather at the ocean's surface in family groups and communicate using Morse code like sequences of clicks known as codas. The group of sperm whales that SETI has been working with is made up of around 400 mothers, grandmothers, and calves. This pod, or two evenly spaced clicks, and then three clicks in quick succession. It's difficult for us to peer into their world, other than these very brief interactions at the surface. This is such a unique, gentle creature, and there's just so much going on, says Gruber. Each time we look,
talk, we find deeper complexity and structure in their communication. He believes that we are reaching a point of technological advancement. That means we could, possibly, decode whale communication. The data collected has been processed using machine learning algorithms to detect and classify clicks, with results due to be published in 2024. The aim, says Gruber, is to be able to reconstruct multi-party conversations. In other words, to create a conversation using the sperm whale's own vocalizations. But, even if we could talk to whales, should we? Could the ability to call to whales be used to hunt them, for instance? New technologies have aided hunters before. Take sonar, which can be used to locate and scare whales to the surface where they can be more easily shot. We should probably do more listening and less talking, says Samantha Blakeman, a marine data manager for the National Oceanography Center. She warns we should be wary of anthropomorphism. As a scientist, you try to study things without bias, she says. You're always trying to remove yourself from the equation, but it is really difficult to do. Baleen whales are at the top of the food chain, notes Blakeman, which means they play a really important role in the ecosystem. They are an indicator for those of us studying the health of ocean ecosystems because anything that happens lower down in the food chain will affect what happens at the top, Blakeman says. More than a quarter of all cetacean species are under threat, largely because of human activity. Whales are also natural fertilizers, says Blakeman, a limiting factor for life in the ocean is a lack of iron. Phytoplankton needs light and nutrients to grow. They can usually find nitrates and phosphates, but iron tends to be missing. But whales' feces has a high concentration of iron. They feed in one area and excrete in another, she says, putting the iron back into the water, which can cause a flurry of life in this new area. Whales also play an important part in Earth's carbon cycle. Marine plankton captures carbon through photosynthesis. This plankton is then eaten by whales. When they die, whales sink to the bottom of the ocean, says Blakeman, so that carbon is kept from the atmosphere for a very, very long time. Gruber hopes SETI's work will increase 